The movie E.T. is a box office blockbuster. It was only released less than a month ago and already has brought in $87 million. The film took in a record $17 million just over the 4th of July weekend. How in the world do you exist under this kind of a grind? You've got the radio show, you've got the TV show, you've got the columns, you've got, you've got all these other things. Because it's not a grind. I know I never use the term, I'm going to work. I have never said, I'm going to work. I'm going to, I'm going to CNN or I'm going to Mutual or I've got to write a column. I'm never going to work. This ain't work. In fact, the secret is, the easiest part of my day is this. See, I, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I can't control if my daughter's not driving carefully. Correct. But at 9 o'clock at night, I can control my environment. I can ask the questions I want. I can break. I can come back. I control it. So I come to a place where I have ultimate control. That all, you know, Betty Davis said to me before she died, she said, you know, this right now, what you and I are doing, this is a great mistress. It's very hard to compete with this because it's not work. This never lets you down. One of the key questions is whether or not corporations are willing to accommodate working mothers. Well, I can't speak for the... Uh, uh, Marty Burns, you heard, uh, you heard John Palmer say, it was kind of an interesting phrase, that, uh, that the president's advisors are saying he needs to do something so the Democrats can snuggle up to him. Uh, if he doesn't have, if the Democrats can't snuggle up to him and uh, and don't, uh, what difference does it make to him? I love the choice of words, snuggling up to him. Uh, well, I just, this is just so much fun, all this speculation. I don't think, to use Bill Clinton's uh, favorite word, I just don't think it would have been appropriate or it would have been inappropriate for him to make any sort of uh, Monica Lewinsky mea culpa, which he was never going to do anyway today. At this event, yeah. Yeah, at this event. He was never going to do that, and he was never going to do it to begin with. And I had said that back then, that he would just give a defiant speech, which he did. And I think, John, the statute of limitations is running out of the, on this guy. His luck is running out, and I think that he's getting almost to the point uh, in the intelligence community, they say, beyond salvage. And that's where I think this guy's going. I think he's beyond salvage. The Democrats, this whole negative thing is, is like the movie The Blob. You remember The Blob? Yeah. I mean, it's just like growing and growing, growing. It's getting bigger. And the Democrats are just bolting. And I don't know what he's going to do to get them to come back in the fold. Well, listen I, to this latest story uh, on the wires, uh, Marty. It if you could change anything in your life, what would it be? Is there anything that you might want to perhaps do over again? No, not particularly in my own life. I've had a very diversified life. And I've had some things happen in it that I didn't like. Such as? I saw friends die. Two people flying in a plane with me, both of whom lost their lives, and I was the pilot. One of them jumped out and his parachute didn't open. The other one killed. Lost a daughter from cancer. I'd like to rewrite that chapter in history, but, but even there, the experience of, of uh, seeing the sacrifice that the doctors and nurses went through and trying to stir, save this child's life was, was tremendously uh, broadening in a sense. Now, the loss, the loss of a, someone that you love very much is, is not pleasant. So I suppose if you're re, you know, redoing things, I, that would certainly fit my... Uh, at that uh, description of something I'd like to change. Oh, I think people would like to know who you are, what's inside you, you know, the real George Bush. Now, can you really tell me who you are? No, not really. Uh, 